Hello there and welcome back to the final part of the Assignment Journey podcast. Today we're going to do a summary of the other episodes talking about the key points and the key findings that we had in each episode. This is designed to conclude the series and also to refresh and revise yourself about the key learnings from each episode. But if you are new to the series, it's also a great opportunity to find out more about each individual episode And then you can dive deeper into those episodes if you'd like. So this episode, I'm going to go through each episode in order. But before I do that, I'm going to introduce myself. So I'm Alex, I'm part of the skills team, and I'll be doing this episode on my own. So this podcast has had quite a lot of episodes so far, but we decided that the first step, really, when you get your assignment, is all about trying to understand the question you've been given. So the key to that, in our perspective is really to get your assignment and to read the assignment brief and treat each individual assignment differently from another. So what you may do for one assignment, you'll do slightly differently for another. And so and what we found quite key in that particular episode was all about tailoring what you do to the individual assignment question. So that would always be the first piece of advice and the first key finding that we had. Like I say, look at what you've got and tailor what the assignment brief says to the particular question but our second piece of advice is all about looking at the question and trying to work out what the question means so to do that we talked a lot about how you can question and define what actually the source says and look into further detail about how to do that so we looked at how you can question to find what the question says so we would take We'd look at the keywords, we'd look at the question words, and we would define those. So we define the key terms, so there they are like the subject terms, and we'd have a look at what they meant, try to look at some broader reading to try and get head around what actually uh, is going on. And we'd also look at the question terms, so words like criticise, or analyse, or compare, and trying to work out actually what does that mean? And how can you show that in your essay? Because the key thing with understanding the question is, if you misunderstand the question, you can actually get yourself into a bad position. I remember Naomi made this great analogy where she talked about how you could do a piece of art and it could be the best piece of art in the world. But if you've been asked to draw a piece of fruit and you go and draw the earth, you're not going to get very, very much marks, no matter how good that piece of art is. So yeah, check out that episode. We talk a lot about the ways in which you can get your head on the question and people have, so far have said that it's quite useful. So check that out. We do a live question where we actually try to analyse the question itself. But once you've got an understanding of what the question requires for you to do, you can start planning your structure. So that takes us to our second episode of the assignment journey. So in this episode, I was joined by Diana and we discussed how you can properly structure your essay, and then how you can plan your next steps. So first of all, with structure, we talked about how there's quite a few different ways of structuring. Uh, The main focus of this episode was the whole essay structure, but also the headings and how you can come up with ideas for how you can plan out your headings. So I'll start with the whole essay structure because that's much broader, but we think it's a good idea to get your head around what the whole essay structure is When you then do your research, you then know or have a better idea of what actually is required of you. So that's the first thing to do, is to try and get your head around the whole essay structure. So what do I mean with that? So first of all, introduction, main body and conclusion. It sounds basic, but you need to do it. And there's some proportions that are generally recommended for those. So if you don't know what those are, first of all, an introduction that's about 10% of your essay a main body that is 80% of the word count, and then a conclusion that's 10%. So in your introduction, what we'd recommend is that you say what the essay is going to say. When I wrote my introductions, I actually said what the findings were. So I didn't talk about where the essay was going to go and what points I discussed. I actually said what points I conclude and what my conclusions were. So that rather than showing the journey of me getting to my answer, It told the reader what the answer was going to be. And then the essay, I showed how I got to that answer. And then the conclusion, I said that answer again. 
So in the introduction, try to basically do a mi- like a mini conclusion, but saying what you will find. So tell me what you're going to tell me and do it in about 10% of the words. There's no strict word limit or word count for that, but that's a good percentage to try and aim for. Then you've got the main body. So the main body, as I said, 80% of the words. In this main body, this is where you get all your points, all your paragraphs written out. And I'll be talking about how you can try and decide the headings. And really later on in this podcast, when I talk about writing the assignment, I'm going to talk to you about an essay structure that you might want to use to help you get the marks and help you write that main body. But effectively, this is where you tell me what you're going to tell me. So I always write my main body first because I find it easier. I really struggle to write my introduction first because I don't always know exactly what I'm going to say. And because I do a lot of proofreading and changing and removing points, the introduction really, I don't really finalise it or really write it properly until the end because it's really difficult and you can sit there thinking, How, what am I going to write? Whereas if you go dive in straight into the main body, it's far easier. So I discussed that with a few colleagues um, when I've been doing some workshops over the past week and they all agreed with that. So after I then finish the main body, I then get onto the conclusion. So in the conclusion, this is where really you sum up the entire essay. You look at what your conclusions are throughout the essay and you put them all together and you show where you can answer the question. As I'll talk about later, we still recommend answering the question throughout and making sure when you finish a point, you actually conclude that point and say how it answers the question. But this is where you add all those conclusions up together to form the overall answer. So you amalgamate them all together in a simple form. In this conclusion, you don't add any new information. You don't talk about anything that you haven't already talked about. You just talk about the conclusion that you've already reached and what the overall answer is to the question. And that should be similar to the overall answer that you talk about in the introduction. The only difference is you're saying what you've concluded rather than what you will conclude. So the tensing is a bit different. So that's an overall essay structure. But in the podcast, we went into some more depth about how we can make a heading structure and how you can plan your headings. And really, that comes from your understanding of the question. So the more you understand the question, the better you can plan out what the headings are going to be. And you can really do that broad research to start with to try and work out what the subject area is, define those key terms, and you can get your head around them. There are different types of orders you can use, and that depends on your area. But an order I always try to use, if I can, is a chronological order where I talk about events through history. That's always quite nice because it creates quite a bit of flow. But there are some other different types of structures that you can use out there, um, such as trying to put them in a logical order so that they naturally flow together. But try and think about the order which you put your headings in so that it works and it flows. But make sure you have a good think about the order which you put them in and also what headings you're going to conclude and use. So after we've talked about structure, we then talked about planning. So now that we've got the headings, now is where you can start planning what you're going to research and planning out your entire essay. So what I do is at this point, I do something called backwards planning. And I talked about that in more depth in the podcast, but backwards planning essentially is you look at what you're expected to do. So in the Understanding the Question podcast, we talked about looking at the mark scheme and trying to draw up a checklist of things that we need to achieve. You look at those things that you need to achieve and you then think, okay, how can I achieve them? And it's really good for projects as backwards planning. So I planned this entire podcast using backwards planning. I looked at what I wanted to achieve and thought, okay, how can I achieve that? But if you... If you do backwards planning, it can hopefully mean that if you think, okay, I need to compare sources. So how can I compare sources? So I need multiple sources. That could be one way of doing it. Uh, If you need to do critical analysis, okay, I need to find sources that can be critical of. How can I be critical? Okay, I need to do this to be critical. And so I will do this in my research. I'll do this in my writing. So backwards planning is essential. Check out the podcast for more information on that one. So I talked about how backwards planning, part of it is looking at what you're going to research and try and plan out almost a bit of a research strategy. And in the next episode of the podcast, we were joined by the academic librarians and we discussed ways of researching. And the academic librarians really are the experts at research for the university. And they talked all about different ways that you could use research using either Library Plus or subject specific databases. They talked about the different guidance that there is on the skills guides and the resources that they've got available to students. And they talked about some key advice for how you can really 
narrow down your search, but also making sure you don't miss things. And I thought I learned quite a lot in that podcast, so I'd recommend checking that one out. But in the second half of that podcast, we then talked about evaluating the sources that you've read. So rather than just finding them, judging them, and working out, are they going to help your essay? Are they actually trustworthy? Can I rely on these? And really, it's all about asking the same question you'd ask when critically analysing a source. So you just ask those questions of sources, such as who, what, when, where, why and how. And those questions can help you determine whether a source actually is trustworthy. I'll talk more in depth about those particular questions later on in the podcast when I talk about critical analysis. But those are the essential questions you need to ask. And their advice really was the wider you, that you read, the more you can compare sources and then the more you can work out which sources are good quality and which ones are not as good quality. But I'd say again, check out that podcast for their advice. They gave some great advice in that. Uh, so that is episode three, which is researching and evaluating sources. So the next step in the assignment journey really is about organizing that research that you've got. So you know you've got your research. How can you organize that? So in this particular episode, um, Naomi, who was guest hosting the podcast, was joined by Emma Butler, who is a research librarian. And they talked all about different tools that are online that you can use to help you to organize your research. Essentially, organizing your work is crucial because it can really help you get your head around your research. And when you go to start writing, you can really hit the ground running if you've got it all in one place, all in one order. And it can mean that you won't lose any key sources. And hopefully that will mean that when you are writing, you'll be more efficient and you'll be more focused. So hopefully that will help. I think that is crucial as well because I know that when I, I aren't organised, I don't know what I'm writing or where I'm writing it. So I try and put it all into headings. Of, so I use the structure and create like a research document and I put the same headings as I'm going to write in my essay, but I just put all my research into them headings and then try and organise the order that I'm going to talk about them. I put what I'm going to critically analyse them. And then when I go to actually finally write my essay, I then have all the information in one place in the order that I want to talk about them. And basically, I'm really it makes it writing really, really quick. And writing for me doesn't take very long at all compared to the research. So as well as doing that, Emma and Naomi talk about different ways of doing research. They talk about some online software that can help you to store references, such as EndNote. And they talk about how there is a guide about different ways of organising re research and references, which can be found through the description of this video. So do check that out. It's really useful. And also there's a video as well, uh, which Emma has made on the channel about how to use EndNote. And EndNote basically is a way of storing your references so that you won't lose them. And you can also find them really easily and get the citations for them. So check that out. It's really, really amazing. The university pays for it and it's completely free to University of Derby students. So after that episode, we went into what Naomi described in the initial episode as the big one. So once you've finished organising your research, like I said, you're ready to write. So we have the next episode was all about writing the assignment. And I was joined by Fran, who recently completed a 20,000 word critical dissertation. And she really talked about critical analysis and how you can critically analyse in your work. But we also talked about creating flow and paragraph structure, as well as also some general advice for writing your assignment. So with critical analysis, we talked about how really you've got to analyse every source that you have and you've got to question every source that you see. And really, you need to come to a conclusion when you do that. So you've got them key questions, so the who, what, when, where, why, and how, and you ask those of each source. So, for example, who wrote the source? You can ask, why did they write that source? You can ask why, basically, any question as well. Uh, what is the source, or what type of source is it? You can ask, when was the source made? How was the source, or how was the case study completed? Did it have a large amount of data, or was it quite narrow? And you can ask questions like that, but we go into a lot more detail about critical analysis in that podcast. So check that out. There's also a video that I've done which simplifies critical analysis down into five tips, and I really go into depth about those questions, so check that video out. It will be linked in the description and hopefully in the cards. If you're watching the podcast version of this, it's on the YouTube channel, search Derby Union Library, and it's called Top 5 Tips for Critical Analysis. So as well as talking about critical analysis, we also talked about how you can create flow 
And really, the key finding for this is logical structure. Thinking, using that structure, which I said about the start, and planning out how your essay works in a order that flows. And it's harder to describe than it is just to do naturally. So if you come up with a good order and you know what's coming next, you can almost make the essay talk about the next part. So for example, this podcast, like I said, I've done a chronological order. Um, this Well, this episode is based on a chronological order of the episodes, but those episodes were determined by what the steps were in a logical order from first step to last step. That order wasn't perfect in the sense that you actually do your research as you're making the structure. You do some people do their research whilst they're writing and you organise your research whilst you're doing your research. But this is one way of doing it and there might not be a perfect way. So just try and come up with the best way that you can and try and make it flow naturally. So we go into more depth about how you can make things flow in that particular episode. So check out that episode, uh, which is called Writing the Assignment. But finally, we talk about paragraph structure and we talk about a concept called P-E-E-C-L as a way of structuring your work. We talk about how that isn't just the only way of doing it, but that is a good way to do it. And some people might say, well, I've done that. I did. I used the P-E-E structure whilst I was doing my GCSEs or whilst I was doing my A-levels. And you can still use it at university, but we've added C-L on. So for the people wondering what on earth is this acronym that I keep saying, uh, P stands for Point Evidence explain and then we added on to it at university level c l so criticize and then link so in the actual podcast i go into a example so check out that podcast to see what the example is and how we can how you can use that within your own work but just to keep it short p is for point so state what your point is and so what the entire point of that particular paragraph is um you can have multiple points or arguments within one paragraph but i try to follow a structure and have many small paragraphs within a heading so what is your point that answers the that answers the question and potentially link it to the question if you can here and use the question's words so what's your point okay now what evidence have you got to support that so this is where you get a journal in or you get a piece of research in so what evidence have you got to back up that point that you've made that's the second part the third part is explain and this is key, really. Explain that evidence, how the evidence that you just used actually answers the question. Because it's all great saying, well, you know, this is the evidence. You've got to say quite explicitly, why does that evidence answer the question? And that's where actually your thinking comes in and how you can get your own thoughts in. So you're not just having an essay just full of quotes from other people. You're actually explaining how those particular quotes answer the overall question. So that is the basic structure, but then we've added on criticised link. And this is where you get your critical analysis in. So critical analysis, as I said, is all about asking questions. So you can either support a the point or you can compare it to another source. You can talk about its limitations, its weaknesses. But what we'd recommend here is you ask those questions of the source or you support it or you, you find something that's negative and compare that. So... You criticise it in some way, shape or form. But then you come to an overall conclusion here and say, okay, despite these criticisms, this source is still valid or this questions this and puts this point into question or whatever. But you come to some form of conclusion. So after you've then done the criticism, which is again one of the key parts and one of the things that will get you a first, and as I talk about in the podcast, it's easier done than you may think. I know that when I was a student, I was I was really scared about doing the critical analysis because I didn't think I could do it. But I had it explained to me by the skills team and I got my head around it and actually I realised that everyone is critical in everyday lives. And I explained how in that podcast. So check that out for sure. But the final step after criticise is link. And this is, again, a crucial step. Link your answer back to the overall question. This is where I have like a micro conclusion. So a really small conclusion at the end of my point. So I say, this is how all this, all this stuff that I've written answers the overall question because if you don't do that at times you can make really good arguments but if you don't actually say this argument is kind of valid because i wouldn't use those particular words but if you explain why this argument is important then it answers the overall question using the question's words that can really help explicitly show the marker that you have answered the question and that you have been talking about relevant things and if you really can't think of how it answers the question then does it answer the question at all 
So we also had some general advice for writing the assignment in that podcast. Uh, so check out that podcast for what the general advice was. Uh, and that probably is one of our uh, most important podcasts because writing the assignment really is the big step. So yeah, it really is the most important thing that you do when doing your work. But once you finish writing your assignment, well, sometimes some people would say whilst they do it, they reference. And that takes on to our next part of the assignment journey. So in the final episode, except for this one, we talked all about referencing and proofreading. And so Naomi and I went into depth about different ways that you can proofread and how proofreading really is more than just checking your spelling, your punctuation, your grammar. We talked about actually how it's all about checking and using the mark scheme and the criteria you use when understanding the question to check, have I actually done what I need? So as I said in the structure part, it's all about backwards planning. You really double checking to see here, have I achieved what I wanted to? And if not, how can I change it? So for example, if you've been given the criteria of talking about a certain topic, have you talked about it? If you've asked to compare sources, can you show where you've compared sources? So that is really important. And I think that's the best way to guarantee, at least to myself, that I'm confident that I've got a first in my work is I check it. And often I change quite a lot when I'm proofreading. So I don't actually do multiple drafts. I just do my initial draft after I've done all my structuring and planning because I do so much of that that I don't really need feel like I need to do multiple drafts. And then I just edit my document extensively to make it make sure that I hit every single point that the marker wants me to hit. So that way I can get myself the best mark possible. But I say that you've got all this time to change and all these changes, but that's only if you give yourself time. So that's one of the key pieces of advice of proofreading is give yourself enough time to do it because I've been there and done proofreading in like 30 minutes and in those essays where I've done that, I've got less marks because I've not been able to double check to make sure I've finished. And I have completed assignments within 30 minutes of the deadline um, and those assignments, I have made grammar mistakes in. Sometimes you think, how on earth did I make that even though I checked through it once? So give yourself time and we talk a lot about fresh eyes and by fresh eyes, we mean you give yourself enough time so that when you, when you read it, you've almost forgotten what you've written. Because if you don't, you sort of just read over it. We also talk about some tools that you can use. So like we've got this read aloud tool on Word that you can use for the Word just to read the tool to you, which I think is really cool and really helps you to spot key errors, especially errors that aren't marked by the, marked by the spell checker. So yeah, check out that episode for loads of details about how you can proofread your work. Uh, and how you can do it effectively. But then we talked finally about referencing. And we went quite extensively through some of the key questions that we get asked as the skills team about referencing. So things like, how do I cite? How do I make my reference list? What's secondary referencing? Uh, Where do I find all the resources? What's your advice for referencing? And so we go through all the frequently asked questions that we do get for referencing, and we try and answer them. But we also talk quite in depth about Cite Them Right, which is the website that we go to for all our referencing information. As a student, I didn't know this existed, and I really wish I did. And so when we talk about Cite Them Right, we talk all about a website, like I say, that answers everything about referencing. The university pays for it, and it's amazing. I use it to answer all the referencing questions I get. So um, in the cards, hopefully now, I will add a guide. Um, I'll add a video guide to how to use Cite Right. But check out the podcast where I talk about why you should use it and what it is. But yeah, that's basically the overall summary of the podcast. And that was basically the assignment journey. But there is slightly more to the assignment journey than that. There's like the aftermath. And so we are going to be doing a bonus episode or some would say an Easter special. Doctor Who had an Easter special, so I feel like we should have an Easter special. And we're going to talk all about reflecting on your essay once you've had your marks back. So after you submit your work, you get your feedback. What next steps can you do and how can you reflect on that to properly put yourself in the best position for when you start the assignment journey on the next podcast? So that's the next and the final step of the assignment journey before it all restarts. It's a cycle. Every time you go around it, you learn new things, you try different things out. I can safely say that I've never approached two essays in the same way because I'm always constantly reflecting on what I've done, whether it works. And often over the years, I've looked back and thought, okay, how could I improve? What ways can I go forward? So check out that episode where I believe myself and Naomi will talk in depth about the different ways you can reflect. We have some other resources on the channel available for that and we'll be pointing you towards those in that episode. So finally, each episode of the assignment journey so far 
has been filled with student voices, both on social media and through student interviews. And I'd like to express a really big thank you to all the students who participated in those interviews. Their advice throughout the series has been commended by the guests that I've had on the podcast. And I thank them for their time. So hopefully we'll be using that type of mechanism in our future episodes, and our future podcasts. Uh, but that will be once we're back to normal life. And that leads me to the next point. Again, apologies for the sound quality being slightly down for these podcasts over the last few episodes. Uh, we're currently working in a different environment from when we started the filming the podcast due to the fact that we're working from home because of the coronavirus. But finally, last thing I'd like to say is thank you very much to all the special guests that we've had on the podcast. So far, we've had guests from the skills team, guests from the wider university and guests from the research librarian and the academic librarian team. So thank you very much to all my guests. They've all been really good and really useful. And the advice and the feedback we've received so far has been really good. So thank you very much. And finally, thank you very much to you, the listener, who has listened to the episode of the podcast. If you are new to the series, like I say, check out the previous episodes. So this is all from me. Thank you for watching again, and goodbye.